Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ahmet Boşnak from Turkey. I'm the president of uh, European Society for Oncology Pharmacy. And also I'm a lecturer in the Cyprus International University Faculty of uh, Pharmacy. I'm giving some lectures about oncology pharmacy, nutrition support pharmacy, and actually my PhD is about the clinical pharmacy. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you in this uh, organization. Unfortunately, we cannot come together uh, by face to face because of the COVID pandemic. Unfortunately, it's a big problem, especially about uh, scientific uh, congresses and symposium. But it's a good thing. Uh, we have internet and also we can record. Um, by the way, you can uh, hear my voice and also you can see my face. Uh, and it's very good, not perfect, but a good way uh, to share our experiences uh, with you. I, uh, at the end of my uh, lecture, at, at, sorry, at the end of my presentation, I will share my email and my contact uh, social media accounts. If you have a question or if you want to send something to me or ask something to me, you can uh, reach me very easily. Uh, today, uh, I want to uh, give. I want to share what am I doing actually uh, in our antineoplastic preparation units, uh, and actually we are we will be focused on the risk of working uh, with cytotoxic uh, drugs. First of all, this is my office. Uh, I'm giving lectures in the university, but also I'm uh, still working in a university hospital and I'm in a plastic preparation unit. And so, as you see, it's a very crowded, but normal, it's, a, it's a not a usual. Uh, normally, we are working only uh, three persons inside the preparation unit, but now the others are young pharmacists. They are, are giving, having their internship there, and uh, we are working uh, under very controlled areas to make these uh, pre pre presentations. Uh, one moment. I want to, sorry. Yeah, okay. So what are we doing? Actually, we are working with the cytotoxic drugs. Cytotoxic drugs are used widely in healthcare, uh, not only for the uh, oncology, but also we are using uh, some different kind of uh, treatments also. Uh, cytotoxic drugs, sometimes known as antineoplastics. Normally, it's, it is antineoplastics, uh, but uh, uh, most of the time we are saying that is a chemotherapy. You know, uh, chemotherapy is a general term uh, which is uh, which try to explain making some uh, treatment by uh, medications, but. Um, how I don't know when, when uh, it started, especially for the oncology medications, uh, the chemotherapy is um, saying much more than the other diseases. So cytotoxic drugs describe a group of medi medi medicines uh, that contain chemicals which are toxic to cells, uh, preventing their replication and their growth and are used to treat cancer. Uh, they can also be used to treat a number of other disorders, such as especially rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. We are using the same medications mostly. Once inside the body, their action is not, is, uh, not generally tightly targeted. Uh, so they are not, uh, how can I say, there's a targeted treatment. Why? Because this is, they are not antibiotics, and so they can, and also the cancer cells are our own cells, and so cannot uh, differentiate very simply. And because of that, they are generally and tightly targeted, not generally tightly targeted, and they can produce side effects both of both to the patients and others who become exposed. Uh, what are the risks, actually? The toxicity of cytotoxic uh, drugs means that they can present significant risks to those who handle them. Uh, occupational exposure can occur when control measures are inadequate. This is the very important thing. Uh, so we are trying to kill a cell, a cancer cell, but this medication cannot differentiate the normal cells and the cancer cell. And so um, actually they are very powerful and very potent medications. And so 
who the people who are uh, making these preparations in the antinoplastic preparation unit, they have a very, very big risk because the same uh, medication, if uh, exposure occurs, uh, the personnel, the pharmacists, will affect directly from these toxic, uh, cytotoxic drugs. And also occupational exposure is another important thing, especially for us. Why? Because we are working under controlled area, we are using personal protective equipment, and we are trying to avoid ourselves from the uh, from the exposure. But sometimes if the your standards is not educate, your control measures are inadequate, and so you are taking very, very low micrograms or picograms every day. Uh, normally, it's uh, not huge. Uh, it's not uh, you are not seeing the effect or side effects suddenly. But if you are taking these micrograms for one day, two day, one month, three month, twelve month, one year, two year, five year, like me, I'm working uh, uh, like these uh, preparation units for fifteen years, and so these micrograms will make a very big mess, and it is a very big risk for you. So exposure, maybe, maybe through skin contact, if you are not focusing or caring about the personal protective equipment so much, um, if you are not using the proper uh, gloves, chemotherapy gloves. And so it is a, it's opening a big uh, gap for exposure, uh, which way with uh, skin absorption. And inhalation of aerosols, so we are using some masks. Uh, I will explain FFP3, very high grade of um, respiratory max actually after this covid uh, pandemic everybody have an idea about the mask today everybody learned uh, about something about the uh, respiratory masks um, but normally when we are working we are trying to avoid much more about uh, this exposure we are using very special very high grade personal protective and respiratory uh, masks and also uh, ingestion can be, but uh, it's very, very low uh, one. Uh, why? Because if you are not eating or drinking something inside the preparation uh, unit, it's a little bit uh, small exposure uh, uh, type. And needle stick injuries resulting from the following activities, especially if you haven't got um, specialized antineoplastic or cytotoxic, cytotoxic preparation unit, if you are not working with close uh, system uh, medical devices, if you are working with the needles, metal tipped needles, it can be, or maybe if you are, if you, like me, for, for 15 years, one day, once you can make a puncture with the needle stick and it make an injury, and by the way, you can uh, expose you very easily. And so, which uh, steps uh, we have we have a risk the first is drug preparation and also drug administration there's a risk for the especially the oncology nurses and handling patient rests some of the uh, chief housekeepers of the uh, hospital and also transport persons transporting your uh, finished prepar prepared uh, bags from the preparation unit to the administration room, infusion room, and also transporting person uh, to the rest, rest disposals, um, or uh, cleaning persons. And so everybody in the team have uh, nearly the same risk. Not uh, You cannot say the cleaning person will have a lower risk than the pharmacist, no. If you are have a connection between these preparation units, like at preparation, at administration, at rest disposal, at cleaning uh, or at this, uh, transport, um, so all of them, uh, all of us are, are a team. And so uh, all the people in the team must be trained before uh, coming and starting the preparation. Our operators can be exposed to cytotoxic drugs through uh, factors uh, such as breathing air contaminated with cytotoxic drug as a powder, aerosol, or vapor. We are actually seeing that if you broke a vial which contains a powder drug before the reconstitution, 
And if you are not working uh, under the biological safety of the camera, it's below up. And if you are still not using the respiratory mask, you can inhalate it. So if you are using uh, HEPA filters, biological safety cabinets, personal protective equipment, high quality, high level quality of the uh, respiratory mask, uh, the risk is very, 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 very low. But if you are working like an antibiotic preparation or uh, some analgesic preparation, the result will not be good. A skin contact with the drug itself or contaminated surfaces, uh, some of these drugs can pass through intact skin and accidental ingestion uh, can be. These are the major risk of exposure. And so where is it occurring this? Yes, these are the types of exposure, but actually which places can we see or come face to face like these exposures? Um, these are can be at first uh, preparing the cytotoxic drugs, handling cytotoxic drugs in liquid, solid or cream uh, form during administration. Handling cytotoxic drug containers, it's another problem. We are not maybe thinking so much uh, the pharmacy inside pharmacy. So the preparation unit is excellent most of the time. Why? Because uh, safe room, biological safety cabinets, you are wearing lots of special things, but uh, the person, the pharmacist or the technicians who are working in the hospital pharmacy, when you want some antineoplastic drugs, they are collecting them and then sending uh, or taking it to the preparation unit. They must under the risk again. So we say, uh, they must use also gloves and mask actually. And uh, uh, handling a treated patient's body substances, handling or emptying a treated patient's bed pans, urine bottles, urinary catheter bags, osteomy uh, bags, nappies, and vomitous bowls or bags. Actually, you know, um, especially for the oncology drugs, um, the body is ex extra uh, uh, taken out. Uh, very fastly, and we are seeing lots of um, not metabolized or metabolized uh, products in the urine, especially. Um, and so, the people who are uh, working with them, handling or emptying, uh, they are under risk and they can uh, exposure. Handling bed linen or clothing soiled with a treated patient's body substances or potentially contaminated with unchanged drug or active metabolites. Cleaning spills or leakage of cytotoxic drugs and related waste. And also the other important thing, inadequate control measures. Yes, you cared about the working area and you were, uh, were on uh, personal protective equipment and you are a very educated person. But uh, so environmental, uh, conditions must be uh, controlled, must be high at first when in implementing, after the implementation, uh, it, they must be checked, they must be monitored because you, you will work for a long time, maybe after one year, what is the situation of the HEPA filters? It must be monitor, monitored. Um, and also, what what is the result maybe? Uh, yes, you controlled yourself or you haven't got any um, any opportunity to uh, to to uh, to implement a specialized area or to organize the personal protective equipment or, or you have all of them but uh, unfortunately you made an accident there or you you your education level is was, is very very low and uh, what what is the result you exposure. And so like this, abdominal pain, hair loss, nasal sores, vomiting, liver damage, contact dermatitis, local allergic reactions, fatal uh, loss in pregnant women and malformations in the children of pregnant women, alterations in the normal blood cell count, CBC results are uh, de de decreasing, abnormal formation of cells and mutagenic activity or mutations forming. So. What are these? These are the common side effects of the cytotoxic. So that's normal. Why? Because by the exposure of these medications, you are taking these medications in your body like our patients and the side effects will be like this. 
And uh, I want to say another important thing uh, for me, <laughs> actually, uh, the photographs uh, you are seeing uh, in, the, uh, in the side of my uh, presentation, all of the photographs uh, had taken from my own uh, preparation unit. All of them are real photographs. I'm not using uh, in my presentations some photographs from uh, downloaded from internet or something like that. All the photographs are real uh, photographs. Uh, of uh, my <coughs> working place and how how this exposure is uh, occurring. Repeated long-term occupational exposure to small amounts of cytotoxic drugs has not been identified to cause of cancer. Normally, uh, in the uh, first minute of my presentation, I said that Actually, we are not, if you have a well-trained, uh, we are not making accidents, more accidents. Uh, we are not exposing uh, because of a broken vial or uh, round of the uh, metal-tipped injectors. Um, but repeated long-term occupational exposure, a risk for us if you are not working properly because one day, the first day, you are focusing so, so much, second, third, but after two years, maybe one, uh, you are not caring so much, something like this. So every time I am saying in my lectures, uh, minimum yearly, annually or yearly, uh, you must train your team, the pharmacist, and if you are working with the te technicians and, or nurses, you must train them and you must uh, update your uh, knowledge again and again. Um, normally, but it has not been identified cause of cancer normally. However, many cytotoxic drugs are known to be genotoxic. What does it mean? I think you know the a substance that damages DNA. Uh, carcinogenetic, that, what does it mean? A substance that may cause mutations leading to the development of tumors in otherwise healthy cells and mutagenity, mutagenics, uh, that means uh, some substance that alters the DNA uh, of a living being, increasing the likelihood of a mutation. So it's uh, very horrible normally, but if you work properly, if you um, care about environmental quality, environmental uh, status, and also uh, education, training programs, using the personal protective equipment, closed systems, closed system devices, all of them come together. And then the risk is for me nearly zero. So what you need to do, what must you do when starting these, uh, these preparations? Well, maybe you haven't gotten uh, specialized uh, environments for the preparation in your hospital, you will be the first. Uh, or you are working, but you are thinking that we have some problems. Uh, we are not um, totally making the occupational risk zero. So what must we do? The first one, you need to identify the hazards, uh, which cytotoxic drugs are handled, what are the adverse effects of health. So you must uh, improve your knowledge about the cytotoxic drugs. Actually, uh, when uh, the pharmacists started uh, like these preparation units, at first year, their education level about the drugs are very, very high level. But year by year, uh, if you are focusing only the preparation uh, and preparation techniques, and then I'm seeing that actually the pharmacists not reading so much the new literature, the new uh, medications in the market and so on. So it's a, so the pharmacist, is a, it must be have two uh, arms or two legs. Uh, the, the right uh, must be focused and learn and train themselves and their team about the pre preparation techniques. Uh, but the, the left one must be a clinical oncology pharmacy. So you mustn't lose uh, your uh, pharmacy skills because only the preparation after uh, maybe six months or one year is like a very technical thing. And so uh, maybe a well-trained technician can make these preparations. I'm not saying the calculations or something like that, only the making the preparation time. But 
you, you mustn't lose the clinical oncology pharmacy skills. You must go outside, you must come to face to face with the patient, you must speak with them, you must educate them, you must explain the side effects, well, how must they manage at home, uh, and also with the physicians, you must discuss the drug and drug interactions or drug and nutrients interactions. And so it's so important to work uh, um, uh, with the team, with the healthcare uh, providers together. Because for me, in, in, in the uh, field I, I learned and I saw, uh, for, especially for the oncology uh, uh, treatment, the pharmacist, the physician, the nurse, caregivers, patient relatives also, and also in the middle of the patient, uh, and also the cleaning person, all of us must work together. Otherwise, it's, a, it's, it's, it's uh, the treatment is not uh, finding its target, and and then decide who might be harmed and how, which employees and others might be exposed to cytotoxic drugs. How might this happen? For example, through the surface contamination of drug vials and leakage of drugs during the preparation and administration. Pay attention to groups of workers who may be at particular risk. Example, young workers, trainers, new and expected mothers, pregnant workers. So all of them, you must think about it. And maybe if you want, you must document it. You must take some notes about your person, about your team, and which is under the risk. Where, how can I say, I, I'm, uh, I'm using a short... Um, a file in my iPad, and I'm writing uh, my personal, my teams, which person, maybe one is Mehmet, and uh, uh, these uh, Mehmet, what's the positives and negatives of this per per uh, of this personal? So it's very important uh, uh, because you are a leader of the, uh, you, you are a chief in the preparation unit. As regulations in my country, I think your, your country is the same, uh, saying that the pharmacist uh, is the chief of the Antineoplastic preparation units, and so uh, you are uh, you you are also a team leader, and you must uh, think that about your personal of their uh, positives and negatives, and so maybe it must be it it will be much more easier to place the right person in the right uh, place, and then you need to evaluate the risk. It's important. It says how likely it is that cytotoxic drugs can be held and decide if existing precautions are, and, and, and also exposure from all routes should be prevented and adequately controlled. And what must you consider about it? The frequency and scale of contact with cytotoxic drugs. So you need to document it. Documentation is very, very important. Information from instance, including near miss records, and the effectiveness of control measures. So, uh, the pharmacist, the chief pharmacist, or the leader of this uh, unit must have a booklet or a file in an iPad or in your telephone, and you must write it again and again because we can see. Uh, the real problem maybe after one year, when we look one year uh, back uh, and we count what we, uh, which uh, problems we, we experience. So it's so important to care them, to think them, to uh, not making these, uh, the, the, the same wrongs in the next year. And also record your findings and review your risk assessment to establish if there are any significant changes and revise it if necessary. It's important. Sometimes it's not occurring by, from your own team. Sometimes it's these problems occurring because of the uh, management of the hospital, because you are wanting uh, maybe uh, blah, 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 uh, trademark of gloves because you are thinking that this is the best one and your respiratory marks, you are <clears throat> forcing them to buy uh, FFP3 uh, respiratory marks, but sometimes it's, it's not going the same. So, so it's normal. Um, so you must record again these things and you, uh, because uh, how can I say the, uh, for me, when I'm, I'm going to the uh, management of the hospital, when I'm trying to 
uh, explain them our needs or our problems. My experience after 20, 22 years, I graduated from the faculty, my own experience is um, speaking with numbers is much more, uh, much more useful uh, for the managements. Because you know, it's, it's normal, the management of the hospital is not a pharmacist. Most of the time they are not uh, the physicians and not, not the healthcare providers. And so uh, if you explain them, uh, yes, we need like these uh, respiratory max or bones or something like that uh, because of the microbiological contamination, blah, blah, blah. It's not working so much. So the numbers are very important. If you are record everything, uh, you will reach your goals much more easier uh, from my own experience, your experience. And also training programs is very, very important. So training, 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 training. And also train with a team. All of the team must be trained. Why? Because think that you are working in the preparation area and unfortunately, and spill came to your eyes. You are very, very high educated person. You are knowing all the skills of the emergency approach of these accidents or so. But now you a spill came to your eyes and you have a lot of pain. You cannot see everywhere and somebody must help you. And so your body, your friend must be educated uh, minimum like you because he or she will rescue too, to, to rescue you from this situation. And so it's so important. And so, uh, and also the hospital managements are wanting you to prepare educational programs, uh, even the physicians, uh, nurses, uh, and also the patients and their caregivers, and also your hospital pharmacy team, uh, so which topics must be included, like these educations, hazards of cytotoxic drugs. If you, if the person, if your um, technician is knowing the risk uh, or the hazard level of these medications, they will uh, work much more uh, good, isn't it? And methods of preparation, use uh, and disposal procedures, patient care, proper use of protective equipment, spill procedures, maintenance of the facilities and equipment, all of them must be included. So how can you control the exposure? So use totally enclosed systems where reasonably practical. So it's very important. You mustn't use a normal uh, injectors and uh, metal needed injectors. So this is very old fashioned now <clears throat> and so. so uh, if you're working like these uh, classical uh, or historical now, historical ways, you are totally 100% uh, percentage open for the exposure. Control exposure at source, for example, by using adequate extraction systems and appropriate organizational measures and issue personal protective equipment where adequate control cannot be achieved by other uh, measures alone. So everything is connecting to each other. And also reducing the quantities of drug used, the number of employees potentially exposed and their duration of exposure to the minimum, ensuring safe handling, storage and transport of cytotoxic drugs and waste material containing and contaminated by them, using good hygiene practices and providing suitable welfare facilities like prohibiting eating, drinking, smoking in areas where the drugs are handled, providing to washing facilities, training staff who handle cytotoxic drugs or deal with contaminated wastes, uh, and the risk and the precautions must they take. Uh, so, what about uh, preparation and reconstitution of the powder drugs? Cytotoxic drugs should be only prepared by educated, trained personnel, trained pharmacists or pharmacy technicians. But in my country, technicians uh, can work in the pre preparation area. They must uh, take an accredited uh, education, uh, but uh, they can make the preparations only under uh, the approval of the pharmacists. So the responsible person of the final back, final production is every time the pharmacist. Technicians can help you only. 
Okay, and, but some of the countries in the European countries is not working like the same. And also the other country, like Egypt, I know Egypt uh, technicians cannot uh, work in the preparation units. But it's I think it's up to the pharmacist number of your country. Um, you know, in, in my country, the pharmacist number is very less, and so it's impossible to for, uh, to work only the say on to to make mandatory the, that the pharmacist must make the preparation. It's impossible because. Uh, because of the financial uh, station, uh, none of the pharmacists uh, want to work in the hospital. They want to open their community pharmacy, or actually, and the pharmacies in the hospital number is very, very less. And so we need to work with the technician. And also, these preparations must be under a standard, centralized um, uh, preparation uh, units. So, how to engineering controls? Uh, what, which, which uh, environment we are working or we need to work? We need to work under class two, actually class two type B2 biological safety cabinets. These safety cabinets, I will explain later much more. And uh, what the main idea is, uh, we are working a toxic material. So then none of these toxic particles must can spread to the preparation unit, to your face, to your inhalation system. So the air, the contaminated air, possible contaminated air, must be vacuumed from the area suddenly, very fastly. And this toxic air or possible toxic air must be throughout, exhaust out 100%. You know, some of the class two biological safety cabinet, like class two A1, uh, 70 percentage is exhausting to the outside and 30 percentage is recirculating. Yes, it's filtering, but recirculating. But for the oncology preparations, uh, the toxicity level is very, very high. The risk is very high because of that. All of the contaminated or possible contaminated air must be exhausted outside. So uh, it's mandatory to implement a class two type B2 biological safety governance for preparation of the oncology uh, drugs. And also you can uh, implement a class three isolators because they are, uh, how can I say, they are safe, safe control system, much more higher than class two type B2. Class three is a totally closed place. It's an isolator. It can be. Um, actually, I'm, I, I have seen in the European countries, they are using class three isolators, but like my country, we are preferring class two type B2. We are not preferring class three so much because it's so, so, so expensive. The preparation area within the cabinet should be cover uh, plastic bags, absorbent material to reduce dispersion and facilitate to clean up any spilled medication. Medication should be isolated and locked out in such a manner that only those properly trained have access to the storage location. And see uh, SA approved, puncture proof uh, containers for the disposal of the needles, shrinks and vials must be provided, labeled, uh, sealable refuse bags for the puncture uh, proof containers should also be available in the preparation area. Contaminated needles and other uh, equipments should be disposed, be disposed of in intact. And uh, the room, the whole room, not only the biological safety camera, the whole room must be negative pressurized. What does it mean? Why we are preferring uh, negative pressure? Negative pressure means a vacuum inside to your working environment. Why? Because the toxic material must be vacuum and throw out fastly. And also, under these, like these biological safety cabinets, when the working place, the uh, particle number bigger than three micrometers is zero because the filter is uh, filtering, HEPA filters is filtering 99.97% of the bigger than uh, three micrometer particles. So it's zero, but it's that it's impossible if you implement this uh, biological safety cabinet in the corridor of the hospital, you cannot reach or catch the zero. Why? Because normally the environment is, uh, the particle number is huge, one billion, one million, one million, two billion. But you must go to the 
biological safety cabinet step by step. Because of that, uh, we are setting these biological safety cabinets in an isolated area. We are saying that it's a safe room, and this safe room also have a climate safe system, and also climate system, and also have a uh, vacuum motors. It must be, and it must vacuum like me and try to make a negative pressure. And so you are in the corridor of the hospital. This is one million particle. And the uh, wheeling part of the uh, safe room uh, is going to 500. Uh, and then uh, in the safe room, it's going to 100. And, and then in, under the biological safety cabinet, you are reaching to zero. So it must be step by step, I, uh, B class, C class, B class, and A class, etc. Um, what, what about the workers? Uh, they must use uh, chemotherapy gloves and also uh, long sleeved gown with elastic cuffs. And also, they must use goggles uh, or full face protection in case where this possibility of the medication becoming airborne. A powered air profiling respiratory is recommended to prevent the spread of medication. Protective clothes should be worn outside of the preparation area. Like in here, this is a short video. Uh, how the person is wearing on personal protection uh, gowns. As you see, this is this place. Uh, one moment, I will raise the sound a little bit. Okay, this uh, part is a, a small part, maybe the ten percentage of the whole safe room. This is a viewing room. Inside the viewing room is positive pressure. Why? Because we are sending a fresh and clean air, HEPA filtered air, directly to the personal. Why? Because we are cleaning the area, cleaning the personal by fresh and clean air. And at that place, we are wearing our personal protective equipment. Normally, uh, up to the regula uh, regulations, wearing must be from uh, bottom to the up. And when we are, you need to take off these clothes from uh, top to the down, up to the down, it must be. And as you see, we are using spatial uh, gowns. I will say a few details later if we have time, but we are making the risk uh, nearly zero because, because of the aerosols of uh, or powder aerosol exposure or uh, powder exposure, we are using very high quality class two type B2 or class three biological safety cabinets and also the safe rooms. And you know, unfortunately, if you made a mistake, a splash came to your body or, or your face or your hands or skin connection. Uh, we are using uh, these personal protective equipments, specialized personal protective equipments. And so the uh, risk is zero. So I'm a live, uh life per person who uh, made these preparations more than 15 years and still I'm good i hope i'm okay as you see open the door and came to the safe room and so as you see what about the personal protective equipment mostly uh this is a uh, five uh device inside this the first one is bone Bone, overall, clothes, chemotherapy gloves, respiratory mask, goggles, and trying to uh, close uh, your feet over shoes. And so uh, the gown, well, I will explain only the important ones. Uh, it must be long, sufficiently long. It must cover the tyrant's uh, knee. And at the front side, it closed up to the neck. Uh, neck and long sleeves with close fitting cuff, it must be. It must be liquid repellent at specialized exposure positions, especially here and inside of the, the, these positions. And uh, it must be a little bit convenient to wear because normally we are starting to use this person to this bone at nine in the morning and actually we are finishing uh, nearly all the preparations up to 1 p.m. and so minimum five hours, so it must be a little bit ergonomics, ergonomics or community to wear. 
Um, and also ensuring the temperature equalization is another important thing because I'm living in the Gaziantep, southeast side of the Turkey, and so it's very hot. Normally, outside is 40 centigrade degrees. And if you are really like these things, and if you have in the climate area, it's impossible to work there. Close, close, you know, we are trying to protect ourselves and also the pro product or the, or the medication against the contamination, especially with microbiological contamination. Uh, actually, everybody is asking that what about when we need to change the glows. We discussed it maybe 10 years ago in, uh, in, in the Congress, very long time, but now uh, the, the, the answer is very, very exact, very, very brief. And so it must be changed, uh, not 30 or 20 minutes. When you need, you need to change it. And gloves should not be harmed. And so they must be free of powder. It's another important, important thing. And they are totally different from the uh, surgery uh, gloves. Respiratory masks, it must be FFP3. FFP3 is a uh, quality standard of European countries. Uh, when you compare with the United States, uh, it's uh, actually the same uh, N95. I think uh, all of you, uh, everybody is knowing something about this N95 mask or FFP3 uh, mask today because of the COVID. How about the goggles? Goggles is important because we need to avoid our eyes from the spillage. And but what's important thing, not important, not much important, but it's a little bit different from the standard laboratory goggles. Uh, the side wings, it must be because of some spills if came from the right side or the left side, we must avoid it. And also we are using over shoes. Uh, biological safety cabinets, HEPA filters, I explained. So I'm, I'm making a summary and I think we have that much more time. And so uh, these biological safety companies have their own HIPAA filters. These HIPAA filters are very, very uh, accurate things. And uh, if they are filtering 99.97%, actually 100% of the particles bigger than 0 0.3 microns. And so it's very uh, good things. And also what biological safety cabinets, we have two, mainly two, uh, HEPA filters there. One is uh, filtering the air coming from the outside, it's filtering, and then the fresh and the clean air is coming to our working place. Uh, and also the second one is at the exhausting. So we don't want to uh, exposure the environment also, isn't it? Because air will go to the outside, and so we need to filter it. And I said that well, which type of the cabinets must we use uh, and the oncology preparation, class two type B2, what is the difference, what's the importance of them? 100% of the used, uh, dirty or possible contaminated air must be thrown, must be exhausted to the, to the outside. The others are maybe the class one, class two, class two type A, A1, A2 uh, is not uh, suitable for the oncology preparations. I think that's okay. And it's a typical diagram of the class 2 type B2. As you see, uh, the green air is coming from the outside uh, with a motor system and the motor is uh, pushing the air to the HEPA filter. And after the filtration, uh, it's come to the, our working place and then is vacuuming again and sending to the outside. <coughs> That is like in here, pressured, and also the dirty air, and then filtering and going to the outside. And also I said that the class three type three uh, can be used. The photograph is explaining very easily. This is, uh, we are saying this is isolators. Isolators are totally closed. And so how can you work it with the gloves? But the gloves is connected to the uh, windshield, the screen of the class three. Um, I worked with them in another laboratory, not for the oncology. I, for me, it's very difficult because these gloves are not uh, are like our gloves. They are very, very thick and so very heavy. 
and it's working uh, for the oncology preparations. If you have maybe more than uh, 60 or 70 patients per day, I think it's, uh, I, I didn't prefer it because it's difficult. It's very heavy. This, um, for me, this class three is maybe for some biological tests, something like that, maybe the PCR test for the uh, COVID-19. But uh, for us, we are we have lots of work, lots of uh, movements inside it. Unlike this, but what is the advantage? Advantage is you don't uh, need to buy uh, personal protective equipment, maybe because uh, only your hands is in the working area and haven't got any connection between the inside and outside. So maybe so. So the cost is reducing a little bit, but it's very difficult, as you see. Here, this place uh, have a plastic ring there. It's make a connection with the sleeve and the uh, gloves. And so you are working uh, uh, with these uh, brackets or something like this. So it's uh, very difficult for me, but uh, you need to ask maybe uh, the pharmacies who are still working uh, class three cabinets for oncology. What about the waste disposal? Waste disposal is another important thing. Um, actually, the main message maybe I want to say, uh, anything came inside of these safe rooms, you must think that this is, uh, how can I say, cytotoxic waste. They are not clean. Maybe some of time you are thinking that maybe I, I, I use some uh, towels inside it, but I didn't use it. It's still wait there for three days or three weeks, and then you want that I want to throw it outside. Uh, maybe you mustn't think that I didn't use it, and so it's clean. I can use it for at the outside or something like that. It's not true. The first uh, understanding thing uh, inside this room, everything is dirty. You must think that this is the best way to avoid of the uh, long-term exposures, especially. And also, I don't want to uh, explain much more uh, detail, but waste disposal is another important thing, especially the environmental uh, exposure. So uh, you must follow the guidelines of your hospital because hospital, they have their own uh, waste disposal guidelines. Uh, about the oncology medications, cytotoxics, uh, from maybe the five years, all the governments, all the hospital managements are implementing new guidelines and they are separating the cytotoxic disposals uh, uh, from the other uh, standard hospital uh, rest uh, material. And so you must follow the guideline. And actually, uh, I'm closing my uh, presentation today before and then I want to show a few photographs to uh, to the, to my <laughs> working environment maybe and maybe I can explain a few things like in here we are using some uh, safe rooms and as you see in the middle uh, a pass box a window there but have two uh, doors these doors are like um, how can I say what if one is closed and locked you can open the other uh, for, for what? For, uh, we don't want uh, to uh, damage the negative air pressure inside the working area. If it's totally open on both sides, what happens? The air will travel to inside it and the negative pressure will be um, uh, destroyed. And so because of them, when we want to send something in the preparation area, we are opening the outside uh, window. At that time, the inner door is lacking. And then again and again. And also we are uh, connecting to inside to the outside. Uh, maybe you can see we are using a walkie-talkie because it's the best way. We are not using a telephone or I don't know it's English when, when you click the button and you are speaking and taking it and you are listening. So uh, because we using like these, uh, how can I, some fixed uh, fixed devices inside a wall or something like that. It's difficult to clean, but like uh, walkie-talkies, it's easy. You can spray an ant uh, antiseptic material and you can uh, clean it very easily. Another way are using some uh, softwares, some uh, devices, and there are lots of in the market, and so I don't want to explain much more. And as you see, 
a few photographs. It's a uh, sign from uh, education of uh, uh, pharmacy students. We are showing them the details and so on. As you see, everybody must uh, wear personal protective equipment, not only our personal, like uh, our guests from the universities or sometimes some physicians want to see uh, what's happening inside it and we are making it. And also we have a camera uh, inside and uh, showing uh, what are we doing to the patients. In the patient's room, we have a screen and online it's, uh, we are showing what are we doing inside it. And so it's very important for about the adherence of uh, the patients. The patients are seeing and understanding that uh, we are caring of them. We are making their medications under these conditions. And so they are feeling very uh, good and safe. And they are thinking that, oh, everything is good. Uh, they are making very, uh, they are working very good, very high quality. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Sometimes we are using like these masks, so it's, uh, the, the type is not important. Uh, so the quality is important. Lots of gadgets. Close connector systems. I, and also we are sending uh, the last production, last bags, prepared bags, and another sealed uh, bag to the services. And so it's a good thing because, you know, uh, nobody can add something or something like that, or uh, any contamination can occur. We are sending maybe uh, for the pediatric clinic, I need to send 10 bags to them. I'm collecting them together, make a secondary uh, bag and sending to them. And the nurse is opening behind the patients and no contamination. There. And that's all. Thank you so much. I hope uh, I used the time properly. Uh, thank you for calling me to give a uh, presentation in your uh, Congress. It's a very big uh, honor for me. And uh, I hope one day uh, this pandemic will finish and uh, we can start a face-to-face -face symposium and congresses. I hope I will invite you, maybe you will invite me again. And uh, thank you so much uh, for your nice invitation. Uh, and your patient, and I hope you will reach your goals and you will uh, reach uh, the high quality of the uh, preparation units and uh, we, we must be in contact also uh, because uh, nobody have an extra uh, knowledge and extra experiences in the, in, in the pharmacies. Why? Because it's a very new thing. And uh, normally um, in the university times, and I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm started to oncology lessons for three years in the university. Before that, uh, they haven't got any specialized and, and, and educational program about oncology pharmacy or nutritional support pharmacy. These are new things. And so where we learned it, because I graduated years by years ago, and uh, we, 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 we shared our uh, good practices with the others. So the associations like ESOP, European Social for Oncology Pharmacy is a very good choice for you to be a member of it. Uh, because we are very open to share our experiences with our colleagues and we are training us together. We are asking, it's very important, like working like these uh, places. If you have a question, if you have a problem, you, uh, if you can find a person very easily by WhatsApp, maybe you are writing, I have a problem now. I, I, I maybe. I don't know how much we may make this reconstitution now. Uh, and so somebody's answering from nearly another side of the earth at that time to you. So it's a very, very good thing. You are feeling yourself a real pharmacist and you are, not, you are feeling not alone. This is a short message from me. Best wishes, wishes from my country, from Turkey. And thank you so much. Bye-bye.